start with a large bag of M&M's. And I arrange, I put all the separate colors in a separate dish. And I arrange the little bags of M&M's so that I know what the result will be. And will demonstrate the points I want to make. I can't trust what the M&M people put into their bags as to whether it will be as effective as my arrangement in making the points that I want them to understand. So there are the little bowls of colors and I have a little chart that tells me for each bag how many of each color I put in. I've arranged it deliberately so there are not the same number in each bag. So some lucky person has more and some unfortunate person has as little as 15 when the mode is 21. And so I always have some left over to reward the ones who got the lower end of the normal curve. The activity I'm going to do today, I usually do at the end so that it incorporates several of the activities we've done in the previous few weeks. And so we take the M&Ms which have been arranged to make my points. Each student is then to told to empty the bag onto a clean piece of paper and arrange them in a bar chart in the order in which I have specified. And on the whiteboard I have listed the colors so that when I go around the room it won't take long to cover the whole class. And they simply rattle off the numbers and if they've done it correctly in the order that is specified on the board, or they may say orange six, yellow four, but quickly so that we cover the whole class. They are arranged by teams so that we can demonstrate how representative any one person is of the collection that the second member of the team has. If you add the whole team together, we can see how representative that team is of the total. So after everybody has reported, we can go around again and get the team totals so that we can talk about, first of all, what was the total for each student. And I've arranged the little bags so that some of them have 15, some of them have 27, most of them the mode is 21 and they have had the mode. So after those numbers are on the whiteboard they can tell me which is the mode and they can also tell me which are the outliers. These are concepts we have previous, previously covered when we measured their heights. So they get a normal curve just as they did when we measured their heights. So we have covered the normal curve, the bar chart, and a little bit sort of, of a sampling in comparing each individual to his team and the team to the whole to see how representative it would be if we made an estimate based only on one team. How representative that would be of the whole class. Then 
we get into the probability part. Each individual will figure the probabilities of each color within their total. Then we can do a team probability of the colors and then we say if we put all the colors in a bowl which is more likely to be drawn. It will be obviously obvious because I've arranged one color to be dominant and one color to be very few. And that's why I arrange them in advance instead of counting on the natural count within the bag. So we have covered bar charts, normal curve, a little bit of sampling, and somewhat more of probability. And then I remind them again of what the functions of a statistician are. There are three main functions. One is to collect data, which we have done. We have done a survey of the class earlier, sort of a census type survey, so that they know what you do when you collect data. Then you have to arrange it so that it's useful to somebody. Then you have to analyze it, either for the user or present it in such a way that the user can do his own analysis of the data.